Life. Jesus, there's so many people. So, so, I don't like I wear a hat today. Somebody needs a haircut and has to have hat. All right. Some, for some reason, the Wi Fi is not bueno today. Uh, the, the hardwired one should be fine. I know, it's for this yeah. one. It doesn't matter. Just, just so we can see, see Kevin. Hello, folks. Hello, Aaron Berge. Good to see you, Berge. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Totally. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty excited for tonight, episode 48. Woo! Yep. Closing in on 52. Mm -hmm. We're done. 52, what would that be? Beginning of April. Good stuff. All right, we are going to get going in. What do we got? Uh, in 10 seconds. Hello. I see, you. I see Kevin. Yes. <laughs> Kevin is ready. Woo! Woo! All right. Howdy, everybody. Welcome uh, to the 48th edition of the Briggs Coffee, Wine, and Treat Show. That show we never thought we would be doing 48 episodes. Yes. So, I look back at, uh, I was pulling some footage from like one of the first couple. Um, and I remember distinctly that first one where, we, I mean, <laughs> it was kind of bare bones up here. Well, it was bare bones and just had no idea what exactly we were we were in for. But um, it's all good. Uh, we've got a fun uh, run of things to talk through tonight. Um, appropriately, a nice little white wine that was in our uh, part of our email uh, wine deal of the week. Appropriate, given that. I mean, I don't know why 40 felt like summer today, but it was... Uh, yeah, no gloves. Yeah, you, you, I mean, down on campus, it was like shorts, shorts, shorts. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's people everywhere without just t-shirt and shorts. I, I mean, uh, crazy. I don't know if they're doing that in Florida. Probably not. Well, they would be doing that, except it's seventy. They'd have they'd have parkas. <laughs> they would. <laughs> uh, a vermouth that we're going to drink that you purchase because you want to drink straight up vermouth, which was such a strange. Thing for me when I first tried it, and uh, it's a super interesting drinking experience. Oh yeah! Uh, some fun conversations with uh, one of our favorite Italian wine producers, um, a gentleman who actually I am—I've never met Kevin, who we're going to talk to a little bit later. <laughs> but what I want is his email address because I want the .it, the whole like you know, the, oh, the, yeah, the, yeah. the geographical. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, instead bet. of the .com, he's got the .it. That's pretty efficient. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, so we're going to talk to Kevin uh, from the uh, Gigi Vaja uh, Winery. And yeah, yeah, we should get a, like a .wi. You know, just well, a, like, I don't think there is. There is no such thing. I, I don't, don't believe there is a U.S. of course or yeah. like whatever. That's not that's not as exciting. The yeah, it's just kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, Steve Bird Wines, New Zealand. But let's first uh, giddy up and get started and talk about the hiatus Vino Verde. Um, uh, my first time trying it right before we got on air and I asked the question like do all Vino Verdes have just that like sort of tickle of bubble on yeah. your tongue and there's a name for that. It's called Petience. Petience. Kind yeah. of a cool name. And, and if you you know put it in your in your your uh, your text it will come up as as a non-word but mm -hmm. if you look up and in the wine world, Petions comes up all over. Um, and it's just that slight little bit of sparkle, little little bubble um, that really kind of adds to the freshness that comes out in this wine. I mean, is that, um, is it unique? Like they made, I guess, do they make Vino Verde anywhere else besides Portugal? Well, Spain. Oh, Spain, yeah. okay, true. But my recollection of their, that's true. Do they have that same? No, it's more It's more Portuguese. It is, okay. Yeah. So. No, the Portuguese, they, Especially from where this one comes from, it's very northern Portugal. Um, uh, it's east of the Douro, just 
below Minhao, which is right below Galicia, uh, Spain. So, um, and they're known for this kind of just very light. It's not champagne. It's not no. It's not a, like it's just a little bit of that sparkle on the palate. I mean, in some wines, you and I would put our thumb over the bottle and shake it up to get rid of that. Yeah. Uh, but this is by design and just kind of gives you that little crisp sort of yeah. edge to the wine. Yeah. yeah. And have you been to this place? No, 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 no. You, but you it, were sell. You were in. Were, were you I sell? was in Doro. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the uh, the cool thing about this wine, is, other than being just really fun and fresh, and like I said, it really over delivers for the money, especially at our email special wine yeah. uh, pricing. Um, this is like an everyday, just have at it. Actually, I didn't look at what the alcohol was. It's not a lot. I guess I'm going to get, five. oh damn, I wanted to oh. guess, okay, I'm okay. sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so this is a really refreshing wine that you can drink, you know, a couple full glasses and not, you know, feel over the top. Uh, but this has got a cool Madison connection because the woman who is now running the winery after hundreds of years of winery was originally founded in the 17th century. Um, her great, great grandfather built the current estate and she oversees it and the wine production and everything else. And she lives here in Madison. She, she, okay. So she didn't go over there. She's like doing it remote from yeah, here. Oh, yeah. she's still here. Yeah. Her, oh, well, yeah, God, yeah. Okay. I didn't yeah, know her, yeah. Her, her husband is a UW professor. Okay. Cause yeah. she took it over. Finance. I think you said in like 2014, 2015, I figured she just jetted out of here and is now living over in Portugal making No, wine. no, she's she's, ah. she's doing it remote. She's going back and forth. Oh, that is a good gig. Yeah, what a crappy, crappy job where it's like, I gotta go back to Portugal. <laughs> nice, well, that's cool. Well, that yeah. explains then maybe why it's selling like it is because a bunch of probably her friends and yes. whatever are out there supporting, it's going like hotcakes. Yeah, the particular store on the west side seems to really gravitate. They, they must them. live over there, I'm yeah. sure. So she's got a lot of friends out there. And it probably also, I mean, the, the email was very well written today too. So we'll have to give them, you know, give a little kudos for that. I'm just kidding. The hiatus, uh, Vino Verde, uh, 1099. So it's really inexpensive. Typically, uh, it's in the traditional sort of looking, uh, Vino Verde, uh, shaped bottle. Um, but it's 899 is what the deal pricing is. So if you are looking to get a jump start on filling up, that wine rack with those early spring white wines, you would do a lot worse. But the only thing that I can say that is a bummer about this wine is the bottles are so tall, it, you gotta like to fit them yeah, in your yeah, refrigerator yeah, yeah. or whatever, <laughs> or your wine rack, it's like. Well, that's why it's 11.5, you're not, you know, you're supposed to drink it You're supposed to drink it up. So yeah, there's no <laughs> storing this bad boy. Chill it down, drink it up. The uh, hiatus Pino Verde, all the stuff that we're going to talk about tonight is out there and available for sale on the BreaksMarket.com website. If you go uh, under events and CWT Live for the Coffee, Wine, and Treat show, uh, March 3rd show page, you will see the hiatus out there. And uh, again, $8.99. I mean, it's a it's a ripping deal yep. at $8.99. When you think about that juice getting all the way over here from Portugal for that mm -hmm. price, that's pretty crazy. Yep. That's pretty crazy. So anyway, hiatus Fino Verde. Grab some, and we are like trying to keep ahead of the inventory on our site. Uh, we keep ordering more. We've ordered more several times tonight as we've seen order come in. So we'll, we'll keep we'll keep it coming in. If you're not able to get it right away, you'll be able to get it uh, shortly thereafter. So uh, speaking of cool places that I would like to visit, because Portugal is definitely on that list. Uh, New Zealand is certainly on that list. Gonna how how I'm gonna figure out how to carve time to do like the New Zealand Australia thing because I feel like you kind of if you're gonna go that far you just you gotta, you gotta do the the start one direction just go west and just, just go keep all going. around yeah keep going okay I'm down with that because I kind of want to do Japan so just like like a big you know yeah. circle Steve Bird uh, uh, we're trying we are gonna be meeting with him next uh, when or next oh this Friday this Friday like two days from now yeah. on the best day of the year March fifth. <laughs> Um, uh, four of his wines are going to be on, uh, as part of this, uh, virtual tasting that we're doing with Steve, um, which is really neat. I mean, uh, do, what does the time zone change? Is it, it's really not that much, is it? Or is it significant? I know well, it's, it's earlier in the day, but it's not like, four it's, well, no, it's two for seven o'clock here. It'll be 2 PM New Zealand time. 
New Zealand time. No. The day before, the day Saturday. Uh, Saturday. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, so it's always cool. One of the neat things about um, these uh, virtual wine events that we've been doing since really since April of 2020 has been the opportunity to get a chance to talk to people like Steve and Kevin, who we're going to talk to in a few minutes. Um, you get hands on or as hands on as you can these yeah. days with the people that are behind these products, whether it's the winemakers, the owners, importers, sales managers, whomever. Um, it is just really neat. And the Steve Bird stuff in particular, I think is going to be particularly interesting because he's got such super strong ties with just New Zealand culturally, it, culturally and, and yeah. so forth. Yeah. He, the, uh, I had to actually do the, do my lifeline this week and send it out. I'm like, okay, I really don't want to embarrass myself and try to pronounce the native, uh, Polynesian, uh, uh, people of New Zealand or whatever. Oh, the indigenous and, people. Yeah, yeah, indigenous people. So I, I, had to, I had to use a lifeline and ask a friend in New Zealand, like, how do you say it? Because as it's spelled, it's M-A-O-R-I. And so you think it's Maori and it's like three syllables. And it's like, think of it as two. And it's like Maori. Maori. Okay, Maori. cool. So, so uh, four different Steve Bird wines are available for purchase. The initial tasting pack is actually three. It's $43.99. You can, you can add on the uh, signature Steve Bird Pinot for a few more bucks, seven o'clock this Friday. Plenty of time to still get it. So please do um, take advantage of that. It'll be kind of a great teleportation to a cool part of the world yep. uh, that's in the middle of summer and we'll all be jealous and all that kind of good stuff. And then uh, one of our favorite uh, Italian wine producers who we featured uh, a number of times over the years, the GD Vajra uh, portfolio of wines. Um, should all... we, didn't we do Dolcetto right around Thanksgiving? I think uh, it was this last year? We did Dolcetto, yeah. 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 Uh, the Barbera at some point along yeah. the way prior to that. I mean, we've done. Um, yeah, we've done. If those of you are in the Finns Wine of the Month Club, you got the Barolo Alba. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. Not this vintage. That was the 2015. 2016 is supposedly Key. Yeah, just a little bit. Awesome. Well, <laughs> we have somebody here with us who can actually vouch for that yeah. and tell us a little bit more about what we can expect on our event for March 12th. Uh, that's again a week from Friday at seven o'clock. So I'm gonna bring Kevin up here. It looks like he's ready to go. Hopefully you're ready to go. <laughs> How are you, Kevin? Hello. All right. Hi. How are you? Well, let me get myself. So I, I, I figured you guys are wearing your merch. So why don't I, uh, why don't I wear my merch too? There you go. Good there stuff. Go. Um, but I'm not, I'm not broadcasting from New Zealand, so. Uh, uh, we're, right. we're, only an hour, we're only an hour difference. I'm here in New York, so um, awesome. thanks for having me. Yeah, well, thank you for uh, joining us. Um, tell us, uh, tell our folks out there a little bit about the GD Vajra and you know what makes them sort of special in Italy, and uh, you know kind of what they can expect um, a week from Friday. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to correct you on the on the way we pronounce the name, and and I think. When we when we do the the class next week, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the history of uh, why why the name is different and, and how it's pronounced because there's actually a J in the Italian alphabet. Here in America, we pronounce the J, um, but you would you would uh, pronounce it as if it was vi ra, so vira. So you think vi, right? There's no we, yep. pronounce, we don't pronounce the J as hard as we do here in America. So. Um, yeah. It, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a breach CWT show without somebody correcting my pronunciation. So <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Don't worry about it at all. I travel all over America, and everyone says something in from that's Italian, totally different. Um, so it sounds like you guys have worked. Uh, I, I love that you guys promoted the Dolcetto around Thanksgiving. Um, we'll talk more about Dolcetto uh, next Friday, uh, but I I think that's a perfect time to drink Dolcetto is with you know, with turkey, with, you know, with poultry, it's really great. So um, just a little bit about us um, and a little bit about the region and then just kind of an over broad, you know, broad view of the wines. I don't want to dive too deep and give it all away, um, but we are, we're in Piemonte. So the foothills of the uh, Alps, um, which is the Northwest corner of Italy, uh, very close proximity to the Alpine range, like I just mentioned, close proximity to the Mediterranean, all, 
you know, affects our climate. This is why Nebbiolo grows the way it does. Uh, Nebbiolo, for those of you that do not know, is the grape that makes Barolo, uh, which we will be tasting Barolo. So I think actually the four wines, these are the four wines we're going to be tasting, correct, on, on Friday? Yep. Yes. Yep. And I think um, outside of Barbera, you know, which, which we're not going to taste the single variety of, the single bottling of, this is, you know, the best, you know, step into the region that we possibly can do. You know, awesome. Dolcetto is, uh, you know, is a grape that is indigenous to the area. Um, the Lange Rosto also has some Barbera in it. It is a, it's a blend of six different varieties. Uh, clearly, we are located in Barolo. So the Barolo is, you know, is, uh, is great. To, to showcase, especially this one, which is our entry Barolo. I'm going to correct your pronunciation again. Um, it's it's Al Bay. So uh, when it's, I won't tell you. I won't tell everybody what uh, what, what the meaning is just yet. But clearly, you could see a sun sunrise on the on the label. So that has some indication. Um, and then the Moscato. You know, it's, it's it, our, our vineyards are all in Barolo, but we do have some vineyards in in Asti, which is. Uh, you know, a 45 minute drive from where we are. And um, I know when I travel to the Midwest, there's a lot of people who drink uh, a little bit more sweeter wines, specifically Moscato. And, uh, and I feel like there's this negative view of what Moscato actually is, if it's a sweet wine, if it's a sparkling wine or whatever. And ours is a really good balance between the two. So I think it's a really good introduction into what Moscato di Asi is. So just briefly about us, we've actually only been selling our wines in Wisconsin since 2017. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's actually a new sort of relationship. Our wines have been sold in the U.S. for you know multiple uh, decades, but for some reason we just did not have that that long relationship that we have in other states like we do now in Wisconsin. So we're super happy um, to be selling our wines, and and uh, clearly you guys have enjoyed that as well. So. Um, our, our story is, uh, I'm not going to go too long into the story because I want to save that for next Friday, but our story is sort of a newer one. We are family owned and operated. Uh, we've been making wine under the label GD virus since, uh, since 1972, but our story goes even further than that. And, 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 uh, I'll talk more about sort of the history of the region. Um, but we're now into the second generation winemaking family. So for those of you that like wines from from farmers who, you know, who organically farm their their vineyards, who make their own wine, who don't just purchase fruit, um, who don't sell their fruit, who just make everything um, in a in a more sustainable, organic, biodynamic manner. These are the wines for you. Uh, they're also extremely pure uh, to the region, to the terroir, to the variety. However you look at it, these wines are good representations of the uh, of the region. And so you you all have a lot of fun when we taste together next week. Yeah, they were organic from day one, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, I'm drinking. <laughs> I just realized I'm actually drinking a gin and tonic. So <laughs> <laughs> no, that's quite all right. That's right, all right. You know, you um, spend so, all your time um, selling wine. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've had we've had that approach since day one, um, uh, and it's we look at it as um, we're sort of renting the land philosophically, if you will. Um, and so we talk about not only just our, our current state of what we're doing, but the future for the longevity of, you know, of nature and on the next generation of the buyer family. And, and so it's, we're just, we're, we're just renting the land for the time that we're here. Um, and it's the next generation and future generations that will inherit. So it's really important to, to sort of, to farm in that manner. Awesome. awesome. Well, we are looking very forward to, uh, learning more about the winery, having our pronunciation corrected, because we're, <laughs> that's, that's good. I'm glad that actually Finn also had his correction yes. as well, because it's usually just me. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to give us a little bit of precursor about what uh, people have to look forward to. Yeah, we'll have um, we'll have a lot of fun on Friday. And um, for those of you that are, are, that are watching right now or will watch, I'm not sure if you guys are gonna post this after, you know, feel free when we when we chat to to use that time to ask you know any and all questions that you have. Um, and I know that you guys had mentioned that you know everyone is very uh, interacting. Um, but feel free to just ask any question. There's no there's no stupid questions. There 
every question is a good question. And so feel free to, to, to use that time and utilize me to ask any questions. For sure. Oh. Especially, you know, two guys who are selling the wine, they ought to ask the guy who sells it, like, how, how you actually pronounce it, you know? <laughs> yeah. like uh, thanks very much, Kevin. We really yeah, appreciate absolutely. it. In, in a little over a week. Thanks, guys. All right. All cheers. Right, thank you. Cheers. Have a good night. You too. Yeah. Woo! 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 GD. Byra. <laughs> Byra. <laughs> I'm going to throw the J in that bad boy before you know it. <laughs> 45 bucks is what the uh, base tasting pack costs for that tasting. The Barolo that he had mentioned and corrected fit on the pronunciation of is also available for purchase. That's a little bit of, a little bit extra. Uh, and that event is next week, Friday at seven o'clock. Obviously it should be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Pretty. Well, I had to throw a Barolo and if you're gonna do the Piedmont, you gotta throw in a Barolo, but it, sure. is a, it is an anchor. For sure. And they're entry level Barolo, so it kind of gives people yeah. a sense. It only, it only pulled 94 points. Yeah. <laughs> Just entry level. Hey, just a little entry level. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the following week, we're going to come back home to Santa Rosa, California, and the Hobo Wine Company. Uh, we joked last week. This, so this is on um, uh, <laughs> the weekend of the weekend of uh, St. Patrick's Day. If you will all remember, you know, for Valentine's Day, we made the good choice to set up a tasting with a wine called Prisoner. It was not intentional. This one we got we got right because we have a gentleman. Um, and his wife, uh, who are the owner winemakers at Hobo, uh, with the last name. I mean, it literally like almost exactly looks like Leprechaun, and yeah. it's it's not exactly Le that. Kipricon. Le Kip Le Le Kipricon. Yeah, like Le Kip Le Kipricon. Yeah, it's yeah. Leprechaun. For yeah, Come yeah, on. Yeah. L i k i t p r a k o n g. I mean, and Kenny Le Kipricon. I mean, that is like <laughs> such a great name. He has red hair. He does. He does. He does not have red hair. A little green hat. I mean, he is just. He's not going to log on. <laughs> we keep, we keep up with this. Uh, so that is the Hobo Wine Company. Uh, Thirty-four ninety-nine is what that base tasting pack costs, um, and that is the nineteenth um, of March at seven o'clock. That is out there and available for sale under the events section, uh, the CWT uh, live, and then the March third show section. Everything that we're talking about tonight is there. We've got trivia coming up on March 25th, the 26th, the Elena Valk um, Italian wine tasting, which, I'm, which I'm, I know it's, it's pretty smoking. Uh, and I'm sure I pronounced it wrong. Um, on the 26th, and a whole lot more. So if you haven't had, taken the opportunity to do one of the virtual tastings, I would strongly recommend it. If you think we're having fun right here and had fun with Kevin, it's a lot more fun when you get him for an hour and a half or so drinking wine yeah. with a bunch of strangers. Well, and we did try Kenny's wine. We totally you know, yeah, we yeah. Did. Oh, yeah. Actually, like the uh, Folk Machine uh, Parts and Labor, uh, excellent with Pizza yeah. Brew to Pizza. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's killer. It, yeah, it's very smooth. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So that uh, rounds out the tasting for uh, the next couple of weeks. Join us if you can. Finn, I don't know that I have anything to say about the Boda Makeup French Press that you sh can't talk about uh, with more authority because this is your coffee machine. It, it, it is totally my coffee machine. And I, I went to the next level of, of absolute geekdom. I bought myself my own little gram scale. Oh god! And I weigh my beans every <laughs> morning, so I have the exact amount wow. in my pot every day. That is. Do you weigh the water and everything? I don't weigh the water. Okay. I. I but I take it to the same level. Okay. Well, I, I always just pour it to the same level. Sure, sure. But okay. I, I. I do an infusion for thirty-five to forty-five seconds, uh -huh. and then I brew it exactly to four and a half minutes. Why the why French press? I like a little bit more tooth. I like a little bit more body and, and richness. Um, you know, we had uh, talked about the, 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 the filters and things like that, and it, it, it makes it so clean and pristine where this, you get a little bit more of the actual bean. Literally. In, in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a chewier version of coffee. Um, these Bodum uh, Chambord French presses we've sold really pretty much since day one that we got into the coffee business. They are like, I mean, it is a glass craft. We sell replacements, but they are insanely durable. I, have you ever, have you broken one? 
I broke one at the roastery. Oh, wow. <laughs> but we, we, you know, we're doing it all the time and we're being sloppy when we're working. But but even and, in, even in restaurants, people have these and they have them for like a year, year plus, and yeah. they're getting like you know beat on. I mean, ours at home, you know, we have a twelve and an eight and a three, four, <laughs> whatever. But um, the uh, we've done them for years. Yeah, we've never replaced them. All the parts, pretty much, that would wear are replaceable. We carry all of them. And uh, we just got a big uh, resupply of uh, the bottom French presses, including the eight cups, the three cups. They're a great way to make coffee. Super easy, uh, as long as you get the, the ground, uh, the grinds uh, correctly done, or the coffee ground correctly. Uh, and add a little hot water, and wait the requisite amount of time, and you're good to go. It's a s simple way yeah. of making coffee. Did you say the thing on, it was on Instagram this week? Somebody, it was like a poster, and it was like about coffee uh, inventions, and, uh, you know, how how to make coffee in what country and what year. Mm. And so it's like French press, espresso, the Turkish machine, you know, like, and it, it, but, it, you know, if you think about it, there's only not even, I think, 10. Different brewing methods. Like, like you know, like, you know, they're considered to be like real brewing yeah, methods, not for sure. Turning into a liquid and adding water. To yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Cowboy <laughs> coffee or whatever. <laughs> Chemex being the best way to make coffee, but well, that's another that's another episode. Adding chicory. Adding chicory. Uh, the bottom eight cup French presses. We decided to hey, we've got a bunch of them, and uh, why not uh, put a little deal on them if uh, to entice you to try them? They're thirty nine ninety nine regularly. It's such an incredibly inexpensive device, given how well it's well made it is. Uh, we knocked five bucks off that, so it's thirty four ninety nine, which is a super super deal. Um, and uh, if you are ever looking to just sort of up your coffee game, change it up a little bit, we had a deal on the Chemex a while back, like compare and contrast, figure out which coffees you like, one versus the other. It's a great way to do things. And you can travel with it. And you can travel with it, yeah. yeah. I, I, I take mine when I travel. Dishwasher? Do you dishwasher? Uh, no, hand washer. You hand washer. Yeah. You can dishwasher. You can dishwasher yes. them, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you need it. Well, it's true. I mean, if you're dishwashing on a regular basis, you got a lot of people using dishes, whatever. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Living, living alone. I would I would only get my French press once a week. Once a week. I know. <laughs> uh, I hear you. Uh, I had no idea that vermouth was something that you didn't always just throw in a martini. and Or a Manhattan. Or a Manhattan or yeah. whatever. Uh, and, and certainly not something that you might uh, drink like an aperitif, uh, like wine, basically. Mm -hmm. But you, we did this tasting, I remember that, uh, back over at Park Street one day after we cupped a bunch of coffee, yeah. and it was just completely eye-opening. Tell us about the, uh, the Antica, uh, I, I don't know, man, it's, it's, it's the yeah. craziest yeah. thing. Yeah, Carpano Antica. Um, it's made primarily of white varieties um, from Italy. They're sourcing fruit from Sicily, to Puglia, to different parts of, uh, of Italy, the recipe themselves have been passed down generations. Um, and it's a very well-kept secret on exactly what botanicals they're using. Some of them are, are hot steep, some are uh, done through a cold water process, and all of this is assembled and put into this vermouth. And, you know, sometimes you go into a restaurant and you look at the wine list and you're like, eh, they don't quite have the wine that I was looking for, and then you're like, ah, I don't really feel like a cocktail. And it's like, what it, what will be just like so enjoyable? And a vermouth like this is so enjoyable. You just pour it on the rocks, nice big, not a little wimpy thin uh, 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 of lemon. You need like a nice slice off the outside of the skin. The oil really shows up. Throw it in there, you're done. Is that right? Oh yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it will scratch your itch. Hmm. You know, it's just, it, it's so flavorful and just, yeah. It's uh, semi-unfortunate that it comes in a liter bottle because you definitely have to take the thin leap of faith with this bad boy. It's a chunk of chunk of a bottle. Eh, you huh? know, when you're pouring it on the rocks, I mean, it, it's it's like wine. I mean, yeah, you know, you're, you're, you're not pouring, you know, an ounce or two ounces. You're, you know, pouring, you know, four to five ounces. But you are signing yourself up for a full liter of things that maybe you might not normally drink straight up. You can always no. use it for a cocktail. There is, there is one, well, there was, or hopefully again, a restaurant 
who was actually had this on tap. No kidding. Yes. I won't tell you how they got it on tap. <laughs> back in the back. <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but they were going through it so fast. It was just like, you know, you're they spending, they're spending their whole night, like, pulling tops and stuff. And it was kind of like, why am I just put it in an easier system to use? How about shelf life? Very stable. Like it's it's kind of like sake. Okay. You know, you know yeah. four or five weeks. Hmm. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's delicious. Cool. So, uh, this is 36. 99 something like that <laughs> I'm supposed to write i'm supposed to write oh, you're supposed to write that down on the sheet. <laughs> yeah i'm supposed to write that down on the notes for the show didn't do that uh for this liter of vermouth it is a very unique drinking experience mm -hmm. i would i would strongly re recommend it if, if you if you have not at least gone out and tried like if you go to some really inter interesting restaurants and they have an actual vermouth section try one yeah because there are some really cool ones from the Basque region and in, in uh, Spain that are amazing, um, but the benchmark, like if you wanted to see what is everybody trying to make, it's this one. Mm -hmm. And this, 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 this is this is not like an offshoot. This is like the benchmark of like really well-made vermouth. This is available Middleton or uh, Monroe Street, Fitchburg, Middleton. Yeah, the trifecta. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, there's clearly a population of people out there that understand it because we sell a lot of it. Like yes. it's frequently runs it off It just the keeps shelf. going. I know. Yeah. I know. It's, if you haven't tried something like this, it's definitely something to try. Cool. So everything from Vino Verde, Vermouth, Vara, Vira, Chidi Vira. I'm not going to be able to do that. My mouth <laughs> just does not work like that. Uh, lots of fun stuff in store at uh, Barik's now and in the near future uh we will be back for episode 49 somebody asked what are we going to do for episode 50 are we going to be here together for episode 50 i have this feeling we are not going to be in the same oh. it's really 52 is really to me the big episode that's yeah. like a year that is crazy talk might have to get a birthday hat we're gonna have to do something uh particularly fun in fact our families might be back <gasps> by then that might be Ooh. that might be the real big one yeah we actually have a gallery we have a gallery again uh, we really appreciate you coming in and uh, paying attention and listening to us babble on for ha half an hour every Wednesday. We'll be back next Wednesday uh, to talk about the next wine of the week and the other tastings that we've got coming up in March and a whole bunch of other stuff. So cheers. Thank you very much. Have a great week. Stay warm. We can actually stay like, like well, you, well, you don't have to stay warm. You don't have to stay warm. warm. Like it is warm. Like get outside. <laughs> get your shorts on. Yeah. Like I don't know. Go get some fresh air. Go get some fresh air. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Thank you.